Hello, friends, and welcome back to the Far Post podcast. I'm your host, Elizabeth Pahoda, but don't worry, I'm joined by Jeff Lemieux. Not sure if we're going to hear any booing today or not, but Jeff and I have worked out a system where I'm going to let him steal the spotlight one time a week, and then I'm going to take it back the next week, knock his ego down a little bit, and then we're, we're going to build it back up. So, Jeff, is that system going to work for you okay? It's okay with me. I mean, I do enjoy the spotlight, but I'll be perfectly honest. I'm also humble enough to understand that my ego could could use uh, knocking down a peg or two. So I'll just spend most of the show just looking for the spotlight, figuring out times to come in and steal it. Uh, but but the, the ego can, it can use a little a little knock every now and then, I think. Yeah, it's, it's good for the soul. Just, you know, keep everybody <laughs> up and fresh and just on their toes. Um, and we hope everybody is still staying safe during this period, keeping social distancing during this time. Um, we've been thinking of all of you Revolution fans, and we do have a special Revolution guest who's going to be joining us, and that is forward Teal Bunbury on the show today. So Teal, welcome. Hey guys, how you guys doing? Good, how are you? Good. Doing excellent, as good as you can be at this, this kind of crazy time. Yeah, so first and foremost, given the circumstances that you mentioned with COVID-19, just how is everybody doing in your family right now? Oh, we're all doing well. Uh, we can't really complain. You know, there's a, a lot of people right now who are struggling. Um, and right now, we have a lot of family time, you know, with a newborn. Uh, it's the silver lining is I get to spend a lot of time helping out and, uh, you know, helping Freckles out and Sienna's being a great big sister. Um, it's just a lot of play time, getting up really early. Um, since now I'm not really going and training every single day outside like like crazy, um, I can do that that duty. So Freckles is loving that I'm I'm doing that a little bit more. But uh, we're we're doing well. We're staying busy, um, and uh, hopefully we'll be be back kind of training soon. You mentioned your newborn daughter Shay. We're all excited to hear about her. She was born late February, right? Yep, yep, yeah, February twenty fourth. So that makes her what seven seven weeks old at this point? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So how's she's, she doing? I mean, this is such a great period for you to be able to watch her grow up. Yeah, she's she's doing great. I mean, the the differences between her and the panda are crazy in terms of just how she looks, how she's acting these first seven weeks. Um, Freckles and I were talking. We don't know if it's maybe just because it's our second kid that we think she's a lot easier, just because we know how to or know what to expect and how to handle it, or maybe it's just a mixture of her also being a little bit better in terms of getting better sleep maybe not being as ornery, but um, yeah, she's doing great. And Freckles is, is, is super, super mommy. So um, can't, can't really complain right now. You mentioned Panda too, being a big sister. How has she adjusted to that? Did she just kind of take on the role and thrive or was she at first when you brought home the baby, you know, yeah. who, who is this? <laughs> no, she's been thriving. It's been crazy to see. You don't know what to expect. And right away, she, she just, I don't know what it is, if it's some instinct or what, but I thought maybe she was going to be more detached. Maybe her age of just being a little over two years old, it's kind of a perfect age. Um, like she's not craving the attention, but she's, you know, if Shay's ever crying, she's jumping up and trying to, you know, feed her or saying it's okay or going and giving her kisses. And so she's being super, super helpful, which is, I'm, I'm a proud father, that's for sure. Aww. And what's the biggest difference from having your first child? You know, you, you know what to expect now, but obviously, as you mentioned, it's a little bit different. So what's the, the biggest difference that you've noticed between the two newborns? Um, well, just, just having two and how to manage both at the same time is a huge, huge difference. Um, but it's probably me. I've been able to like calm down a little bit in terms of worrying too much. You know, with, with the panda, I was worrying a lot. Um, and I still worry with Shay, but I think it's maybe just not as much. Um, I'm not always like every little skip of a breath or something. I'm like, oh, let's call the pediatrician. You know, I've calmed down a little bit. And I think Freckles is happy about that. Teal, you talk about having you know, the two little ones at home. And I know you're spending all day, every day with them and loving that time. But also I know you know, as, as parents, you try to get that little bit of respite throughout the course of the day, too, where you're probably trying to get them down both at the same time, get a little nap, just so you can have a little bit of a break. And I know Will Trapp recently was on uh, the call-up with Jillian Sakovitz and Susanna Collins, and he has a five-month-old, and he talked about singing to his five-month-old to get him to sleep. Have you ever, have you ever taken to, to singing to get, uh, to get either Sienna or Shay down? Um... To get no I usually leave that to freckles she'll usually kind of kind of sing I don't I don't have a voice I mean my sister does but I don't have that gene um but no I'll try to if anything I'll try to like read 
uh, read to them a little bit uh, with Shay. It's just if I'm just kind of rock, I'll sing to Shay as I'm rocking her. Um, but my voice is awful. It's, it turns more into like a little bit of humming or something like that, you know. Um, but no, the pan has been doing a really good job of like nap time and going down. We got this really cool thing that because um, she usually wakes up like really early, like five in the morning, sometimes four or something. So we're like, all right, what, what do we do now? Um, we got, this has to change. We've tried putting her to bed later, earlier, change everything. We got this light, this like night light that, uh, basically it stays, you know, a certain light color. And, um, when it changes colors, she gets to pick that color. But when it changes colors, that's when she can get out of bed or that's when she can call mommy and daddy to come, uh, get her. So it's been, it's been working, you know, she's been sleeping until six o'clock and she'd be like, oh, it turned purple, it turned purple, mommy, daddy, like, you know, so it's, it's kind of fun and it's working, so. Cool. I've never heard of that before. Yeah, it's it's really cool. I freak, I think it's called like Hatch Baby or something like that. Hatch Baby. Okay. Yeah. It sounds like you guys have a system down for, for bedtime and naps. I mm -hmm. know a lot of parents, when they have two children, they divide and conquer. Someone takes one child, someone takes the other. What kind of system do you and Freckles have as far as parenting goes? Um, well, Freckles is obviously with the whole feeding and everything. She's more so on, on shade duty. Um, and I'm more so watching the wild, uh, wild panda, you know, she's, she's at age right now where she just wants to get into everything and she's great, but you know, just staying on top of her and it, you know, keeps me active too, um, during this time. So we, we kind of split it like that, I would say. And you like to call your wife Freckles, you call your first born daughter Panda. Do you have a nickname for Shay yet? Um, well, I've been calling her Woody just because, uh, <laughs> Because every time she gets hungry, she starts like going like this, like she's like a little woody woodpecker. Um, but I don't know if I'll call her that. Uh, I might, I might just end up calling her Cerise her middle name, but uh, not sure. Still, still TBD. How, how is Freckles doing as well? I know you mentioned that she, she, she's been kind of a rock of the family, but um, how has she been doing throughout this? She's been unbelievable. Um, I know she's uh, really itching to get back to go to the gym and you know, go on her target runs and uh, get out of the house a lot more. But uh, she knows the importance of, you know, social distancing and what's going on right now, keeping our loved ones safe and all that. But uh, she's she's doing awesome. And her and the panda have been cooking a lot and baking, baking cookies. This morning, they actually baked me an apple pie, which is uh, really nice of them. So they're staying busy. What's your favorite item that she cooks or baked good? Oh. Oh, I mean, her apple pie is unbelievable, but I could go down the list of stuff. She she makes great buffalo chicken lasagna. Uh, she just made this uh, chicken, baked chicken uh, pesto risotto uh, a couple nights ago. So she's on it with the cooking. Yeah. Lunchtime right now, man. You're getting me, I'm getting a little hungry. I might have to, if I pop out, it's because I just went to get some lunch after you made me. Yeah, yeah. Is there I'm anything actually, yeah. special about her apple pie? Like, I don't want to have to give away any, recipe secrets but what is it about her apple pie that makes it incredible mm, i don't know she I, I don't know if all apple pies are this way but um i prefer an apple pie that doesn't have too many apples i'm more of like kind of a crust guy and then on top of the apple pie like a, like a light little kind of crust but with like the cinnamon sugar and some other like kind of like crumble i don't know what it would be but she makes it to perfection okay are you an ice cream on top of apple pie kind of guy or do you like just the apple pie Oh, you got you have to have vanilla ice cream. If you eat apple pie without ice cream, that's kind of wild to me. You're not living if you don't have ice cream without <laughs> apple pie, right? Uh, you need, yeah, you need the ice cream, I think. But teach his own. You, you mentioned earlier that uh, your sister got the genes in the family to sing when we were talking about uh, singing the girls to sleep. How is your family doing? We know how close you are with, with your two siblings, with Kylie and Loki. So how is everybody faring? And, and where is everybody right now? Um. Well, so my... Uh, my mom is back in Minnesota. My brother's there too. And my sister and her husband are out in California. So um, every, we, we, we get on a portal, which is basically like, a, I don't know, like another videoing, video messaging kind of service, um, at least once a week with all of us. Uh, so that's always fun to just catch up um, with all three of us and just see what we're doing. And uh, so they can see the girls as well. But uh, everyone's staying safe, um, you know, doing their part. But uh, I think everyone's kind of ready to like we don't know what's next kind of but uh the biggest thing is that everyone's healthy they're happy um and just trying to stay busy and active you know it's it's not 
if you're just getting sedentary right now, it's not going to be a good thing. So they're just trying to go out on walks, and even though it just there was just like a blizzard in Minnesota like two days ago. Oh, which really? is crazy. Yeah, <laughs> which is wild. So you can't really do much when that happens. But yeah, everyone's doing great. Now we're lucky in, in New England that we've had a warm spring. And I know mm. that Shay was born right before uh, this pandemic kind of got got worse. Did any of your relatives get to to meet Shay beforehand, or are they still waiting on that big moment when they get to hold the baby? Um. So uh, my mother-in-law uh, was here for about. I want to say like two weeks, like a little bit before uh, Shay was born. Um, and then a little bit after um, one of my best friends was in town um, doing some like course at Babson College, actually, or Babson University, I forget what it's called. But uh, he he actually came the day she was born to the hospital. He was just waiting down the hospital for, for like three hours. He's like, yeah, I don't care if I have to sleep here. Whenever you guys are ready, let me know. So that was great. His name's Scott Tubson. He's from he's from a childhood friend. He's like a brother to me. So um but yeah still waiting for uh you know things to kind of calm down my mom was planning to come out but things uh some circumstances changed that but hopefully here in the next you know month uh, some more family members will be able to come out that's great i hope that moment comes soon for them to be able to come meet her and how close of contact have you been in with your teammates during this time uh, a lot of contact um we're actually doing uh we're actually doing a zoom you know like virtual workout every wednesday uh, and the group I have is with Seth, Mance, Butner, um, Buxa, um, Terry Farrell, um, who else? Maybe a couple other guys, but uh, 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 Brad. So it's it, we're able to kind of stay in contact that way. And then also we're always like FaceTiming, checking in. We have a big WhatsApp group, just checking how everybody's doing. So I think that's really important during this time is making sure everybody's doing all right, their families are all right. Um, but a little sense of normalcy, you know, it's, this is uncharted territory for all of us. You know, we're used to training and playing and I know, you know, sports isn't a big thing during this whole thing, but I think that just community and the sense of, you know, loving and caring is, is huge right now. So just staying in touch with, with them has been great. Are you able to, to keep up the banter? Oh yeah, that, that's, that's a must <laughs> right now during this, you know. Uh, Cause you know, everybody's definitely struggling with like getting haircuts like myself and things like that. So we're able to rib each other a little bit. Who's had the best banter? Um, who's had the best? I don't know who's had the best, but I know, I know Farrell's had the worst. We'll just say that. <laughs> actually, actually his video. Um, I was just uh, about to ask. Oh my gosh. That was one, one of the best things he's ever done. I think in his life. Which look was the most accurate in his video? We'll have to have to put that in here so people can see his TikTok where he dressed up as different um, different years going into the stadium before a game. It was hysterical. Oh my gosh, the Rico Suave was spot on. The like second year pro, that one was to me that was like the one where you're like you see guys coming in after the rookie season, second year they think they got it all figured out. It's it's pretty funny. So that was really well done by him. Did you look at that and, and immediately kind of assign specific players into categories? You're like, all right, I know who that is. I know who that is. I know who that is. Is there like, was there clear kind of differentiation? Yeah, there, there was. <laughs> there was. I'm, I don't think I want to get into it. No, I'm I'm not, I know no one would. But I just, I'm yeah. figuring as players, you're probably oh, watching that thinking like, all right, I, I know who he's thinking of when he does that specific guy. Oh, yeah. And not only on, on our team, but... Uh, you know, players across the league too. You just, you know, and it's, it's pretty hysterical. How important is it to have somebody on the team that kind of provides those sort of virtual moments, I guess, where everybody can have that kind of joint laugh together? Uh, I, I think it's huge. You know, I think it's huge, even, even if it's not necessarily on social media, but if it's just, you know, private too, but uh, the benefit of it being on social media, I think is, you know, the fans are being involved in it. And I know it's tough for them, right now and they'd usually sports is a time where usually can kind of help you cope with problems and things that are going on and that for a lot of people it's tough right now because there is no sports but um so I think things like that and staying interacting and involved with fans I think is, is huge so I think that's 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 fun for us when you're talking to your teammates and you're talking with guys like Farrell or Kellen guys who don't have families at home is there discussion about how different 
isolating is for this period of time between guys who don't have kids and guys who have kids? Are you like, guys, you don't understand how different it is being home with kids? Yeah, it, for sure. For sure with uh, Farrell. Um, but, you know, for me, it's, it's definitely tough tougher um obviously if I was just whatever home alone I'd probably just game all day or something you know which, <laughs> which is nice but but I mean I also think on the other end it's like man I I think I would be bored too you know because the panda just she brings me so much joy just doing random stuff and the silly things she's doing and uh and shake too just starting to smile nonstop. so I don't know it's some people can look at it and be like oh man with if you had a full house it'd be wild but um I look at it as a as a blessing and there's don't get me wrong there's definitely times I would be lying to there's definitely times where I'm like okay I need let me just get in the car and drive for 15 minutes let me get a breather but um besides that it's it is very different having a family in isolation and, and kind of being on your own you mentioned the silver lining of being able to spend so much time with your kids what are the cutest Shay and Sienna stories that you can share with us mm. um well recently with uh with the panda is that uh when it's nice outside, she loves going outside and uh, using sidewalk chalk, but she'll get so excited and she's like, I need walk, walk chalk. I need walk, walk chalk. So that's something that's really funny right now is that she calls it walk, walk chalk and gets like super excited about it and starts jumping around. Um, yeah, with, with Shay right now, it's just you know, over the past week, just like a lot of smiling and like kind of cooing and ooing. So those are fun, but seeing them kind of interact and, and seeing uh, getting super excited to try to help her with anything. Um, Freckles and the Panda have been doing a lot of uh, uh, yoga in the morning, but we, there's this like Marvel's like superhero yoga thing on YouTube we found. So she loves doing these like, like in Spider-Man is kind of in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but anyways, but there's these like Spidey kicks that she does on the yoga man. She loves doing it, doing yoga with mommy, so. That's been uh, really entertaining. Oh, Spidey Kicks. I'm going to have to look up the Marvel yoga yeah. workouts and do one yeah. of those. That yeah. sounds pretty cool. And speaking yeah. of workouts, I know you touched on a little bit how uh, you guys have been doing some Zoom calls once a week to do workouts virtually. What have you personally been doing to stay fit while at home during this time? Yeah, so we all have uh, stationary bikes here. Um, so I'm able to get on the bike at least probably four times a week. Um, if, if the weather's bad, if the weather's nice, then I'm definitely going outside and going for a run, whether it's like a little 5K. Um, there's like a field that's close by that kind of able to run around. Um, I don't have any like weights, any like dumbbells or anything like that. So I've had to improvise and using like suitcases and things like that. But um, just trying to do what I can to, to stay in shape. No one knows how long this is going to go, how much longer we're going to, you know, kind of not be training. So whatever we can do to kind of keep our minds sharp and our bodies, you know, physically as fit as possible is what I'm trying to do. I've seen a lot of guys using their kids as weights. Do you ever get Shay and Sienna into the mix to get a little, no. get a little dumbbell action in? <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll try it next time, but yeah, we're just, <laughs> with Sienna, she's a little, a little too wild. I don't know that that would go on too well. <laughs> I know last week when we were talking to Adam Buxa, you mentioned he's on your Zoom group for the team workouts. And he said, look, I know that we're isolating and we're working out at home. Like these workouts that we're doing are intense. Like how intense have, have the workouts been and how fit are they keeping you during this time? I, I mean, it's obviously you put the work that you can in um, and everybody's trying to work as hard as they can. So the, the workouts are definitely very difficult. Like on the bike, you're, you're really tired afterwards. And in between the bike, you're doing these like split squats and a bunch of different kind of plyometric things that um, really get your heart rate up. So they're, they're definitely really intense. And um, obviously it's nothing like being on the field, kicking a ball, playing small sided, those things, but it's definitely the next best thing. So uh, that's been really helpful, but the, they are tough. <laughs> Have you been able to work on your soccer skills at all during this time? No, not really. I'll be honest. I'll try to go in the backyard and kind of juggle a little bit, but it's tough to really do anything where it's, I mean, if you could do some little drills, but you know, you're not really passing with anybody, you're not working on your finishing and, and those things. So it's mainly just kind of keeping your fitness up at this point. And I know Frank DeLapa wrote a story a 
it must have been about a month ago at this point that you and Farrell had met up a few times to do social distancing workouts. Has that been something that you guys have continued to do at this point? Obviously practicing safe rules and all. Yeah, yeah, we've, uh, we've tried to do it the best we can. Um, when things kind of got a little bit more strict, uh, I think we, we stopped that maybe a week and a half ago. Uh, mm -hmm. So we kind of been just doing our own thing. Um, but we might continue that here pretty soon, um, just depending on what these restrictions are like. But yeah, definitely all those rules of trying to stay six feet apart, nonstop washing our hands, wearing gloves while we're running, um, and all those like Clorox wipes and whatever on the steering wheel and no hugging or kissing or high five and none of that. I know I'm never going to take another high five or hug for granted after this. <laughs> I know, huh? <laughs> and uh, we've talked about the physical keeping in shape that side of things, but there's also the mental element that we just haven't been at training. You haven't been on the field. So how tough is that mental side for you right now? Mm -hmm. It's pretty tough because you know when uh when it's an off season you know that you're you know it's a set time so you have in your mind already like okay i'm going to be able to do these things i'm going to be able to you know maybe i'll take a couple weeks off and then i'll start working out i'll be able to go home and, and right now it's we, it's the unknown we don't know when we'll be back um so that's difficult i i think to to realize when you're going to be back and so you want to stay sharp mentally for me it's reading it i mean a few of the guys we have a bible study group that we do virtually as well uh, with our chaplain Walt Day. So I think that's the biggest thing that's kind of keeping me strong through this is having those Bible studies. Um, and, uh, you know, the panda's keeping me, you know, mentally there too. So yeah, it's, it's difficult. And while working out, you know, is extremely important. We've talked about that and the, the mental aspect of it as well. We touched a little bit on what you've been eating, but what have your meals kind of consisted of during this time? I know Freckle has your great apple pie, but when you're not having yeah. your, your dessert, what are you typically yeah. trying to eat? Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of a lot of meats. I'm trying to stay away with uh, from too many carbs. So it's like a lot of, if it's fish, if it's uh, baked chicken, um, trying to get some vegetables in there. I'm not crazy about them, but um, I'm not eating as many meals, I think, just because I'm not burning as many calories, so I'm not as hungry. Um, having some good eggs in the morning, um, sometimes some porridge would be like kind of the carbs that I'll do. But yeah, just trying some nuts if I get a little bit hungry, but I'm not eating too much um, since I'm just not burning as much. I know, you've been pretty open about the fact that you've got a sweet tooth. You like grabbing mm -hmm. a little candy every now and then. We've talked all the time oh, yeah. about what your favorite candies are. Have you had to try to curb that a little bit just because you're not working out as much as you normally would be during a regular season? I, I have been trying, but it's a tough <laughs> battle. <laughs> it's definitely a tough battle. No, I mean, I'll have my fruit roll-ups or my gummy bears or my Twizzlers and things like that, but definitely trying to stay away from it too much. You know, it could be so easy, you know, you're just at home. And sometimes if you think it's boredom, you just start eating. But uh, um, yeah, I'm trying not to as much, um, but occasionally. I'll you gotta to indulge every now and then, that. man. Yeah, you just have to. Now, if you are gonna indulge, you're not having freckles apple pie, what's your go-to snack item? What I've been eating recently was, uh, has been fruit, uh, fruit roll-ups. Like, like I'm in elementary school. <laughs> is it the fruit by the foot or is it the sheet? No, no, it's the, yeah, it's the fruit roll-ups. Yeah, not the fruit by the foot, but um, I could eat those too if I had them. Um, I sure. saw recently there was someone, it was, it was an athlete and his wife and they had a competition where, you know, they put the end of the fruit roll-up in their mouth and let it hang and then they ate the fruit roll-up with no hands oh, and they had a competition. That. And like, I forget who it was, but he finished and he looked at his wife and he was like, these are delicious. It was like he had, no, they did it just you for the competition. He had no clue. Oh, that's funny. The roll-ups are actually that good. Good. Yeah, that's wild. That's wild. PSA, fruit roll-ups. You got to get them when you can. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and uh, Teal, I know we've talked about, you know, you have your two girls at home, your, your young girls, and then you have freckles. But what else have you done in your free time? Or have you just been full-time parent during this social distancing period? Well, I've, uh, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of parenting, a lot of just like, reading if I have time, listening to like podcasts, if I'm going on a, on a little run or something like that. But um, I've also been, uh, I got some, got some cards here. I've also been practicing my magic. Um, I can't do any like virtual tricks, but I know once this is over with, um, 
my magic is going to be back on on track my street magic with with, with the card so i've been practicing my uh magic a little bit in gaming so that's kind of been keeping me busy we're gonna have to follow up with you on those magic tricks yeah. I'm very curious you yeah. just opened it up that's I'll a that's it. a feature when we get back yeah i'll do it i'll, I'll be ready i'll be ready <laughs> do you, you have a favorite oh sorry no, I was just saying, do you have a favorite magician? You mentioned street magic. You into like David Blaine and like that type of yeah. magic. Yeah, he's probably my favorite. I love him and I love Darren Brown also. Okay. Um, he's a, a British kind of, he's a magician, but also, I don't know about illusionist, but I, I don't know what you'd, you'd term him. But yeah, he's got a few specials on Netflix. And I know David Blaine just had one on ABC the other night. I've seen all his stuff, but uh, he probably got me into, into magic when back in like, 2002 or something like that I think he had a special and that kind of captivated me to want to be a magician but yeah yeah magic if, if you magic. haven't seen magic for humans on Netflix with Justin Willman check out magic for humans on Netflix Justin Ooh, Willman okay. he's awesome I saw him live actually cool. a few a few months ago he's checked that one out really that's my recommendation Ooh, I'm gonna check that out oh the sorry Elizabeth, go for it we're, we're, we're in deep in the magic talk now yeah. I was just going to ask another question about magic. So what was it about him that made you want to get into it? Like that moment that you realized you wanted to kind of just give it a shot. I, th I think it was just uh, the reactions people were having with all his, his tricks. And then I couldn't figure it out. And I was like, I, I want to be able to like have that reaction from people um, and be able to kind of master certain tricks and have that all. Oh, oh, sorry. My, the panda's waking up. I might have to go grab her. That's okay. Did you yeah. ever do any magic tricks for her? Uh, I, I try to, but she's too smart. <laughs> she knows. It's crazy. She like knows the tricks. She's like, no, daddy is over here. I'm just like, oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah. She just got up. She's trying to sing. Oh, the light she's came re She's ready. She's going to climb out. I know. <laughs> I know. All right, so to wrap up what we've been doing, Jeff has been asking, would you rather questions? So he's gonna give you two options. They can be soccer related, not soccer related at all. And you have to pick which one that you would rather do. So okay. I'm just gonna hand it over to Jeff and see what he has. All right, so we'll go soccer, non-soccer, soccer, non-soccer, soccer. soccer, soccer. So we'll, we'll go in a little bit okay. of a pattern. First one, it's the MLS Cup final. To win the MLS Cup final, would you rather take a regular penalty, left-footed, or take one of those old school style MLS shootout 35 yard run ups. The, the, the run up for sure. Yeah. I've always wanted to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Most stuff. I think that'd be fun. Yeah. I think, I think it might be harder um, than what it looks like, but I think that'd be fun. Go back. All right. There might be a feature there as well. We're, we'll, we're banding around some ideas. Okay. All right. Would you rather be able to see 10 minutes into the future? or 10 years into the future? So 10 minutes or 10 years? Like, is it just a one time? Like, oh, I just saw 10 minutes from now, or is it like consistently, I know what's gonna happen in 10 minutes? Uh, let's say consistently, because 10 minutes into the future one time, I guess wouldn't be all that. Like, uh, you'd like literally that. still be sitting on your couch. couch yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Huh? Hmm. Down and follow up. Yeah, maybe 10 minutes then. I don't, I don't need the whole 10 years like that. That might be too much mentally. Like I'm with you on that. Yeah. I don't want to know what yeah. the deal is in 10 years. Yeah. That kind of defeats the whole purpose of living, right? Mm -hmm. 10 minutes is fine. Yeah. Mystery. All right. You're say, say you're at a wedding. Someone challenges you to a dance off. Would you rather have a dance off against Andrew Farrell or Charlie Davies? Hmm. I mean, either of them. They're both pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, he called you out. Heard it so here. it's an easy win. Easy money. Yeah, but yeah, Charlie thinks he could dance. You guys, let me tell you, he has no rhythm. Don't let him fool you. His little snippets, all he has is a stinky leg, and that's been out of style for like 20 years. So, so yeah, I'll and go he probably, You know Charlie. he's busting out the stanky leg at, during oh, the dance-off, yeah. and he thinks that's oh, winning. Yeah. He thinks that's his winning move. Yeah, he busted that out in, uh, in our wedding, like, you know, five years ago. Almost five I years ago. Yeah. All right. This is, I think, fitting for our current situation with isolation. Isolation. Would you rather wear sweatpants forever or never be able to wear sweatpants again? Sweatpants forever. Yeah, sweatpants forever. That's yeah, I mean, yeah, hashtag sweatpants, sweatpants forever. Pants? Yeah, for that's, sure. that's, I mean, yeah, like jeans, get out of here. <laughs> Don't even need them anymore. Unnecessary. No. Yeah. All right. Final one. 
would you rather play alongside Messi or have the chance to play alongside your dad, Alex Bunbury, when he was in his prime, who was a former MLS player who played for the Kansas City Wizards? Uh, yeah, I'd have to pick my dad. Yeah, right? That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, that'd yeah, be cool. That, that, that'd be wild. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I'd pick my dad for sure. All right. I'll finish with one last question, not a would you rather. We've asked pretty much everybody this question at the end of each podcast. If you could go back right now and relive one moment from your career, experience all of the emotion of that moment again, what moment would you want to go back throughout the course of your career and get to relive again? Hmm. One moment. Probably, probably our Eastern Conference final, second leg, just knowing we were going to the MLS Cup final. I would have said the MLS Cup final, obviously losing that hurts. And that also could be a good like motivator and uh, make you stronger. So that's like a close second. But uh, yeah, I, I would say the Eastern Conference uh, final, second leg versus the Red Bulls back in 2014. Um, okay. just was a special time. I think it was a whole season of uh, kind of ups and downs. And that group of guys was just amazing. And the most fun I probably had in my, in my career during that season. Interesting that I love that you actually brought up the final and almost said, you know, maybe I would go back and relive a moment of pain almost to, to mm -hmm. you know, want to, drive myself moving forward. Nobody has said anything like that. Obviously everybody's just picking, well, I'd want to go back and relive my best yeah. moment from my career. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. a, that's a really interesting answer. I think I like that one. Yeah. Well, I just, I mean, Oh, it's always good. I think you get better when you kind of go through those tough times, you know? So for me, it's like, a, that was a, it was great to be, be in the final and then, you know, you lose it and it's, it's really tough. And it's like, you really find out who you are and, can push you and motivate you. So I'd, I'd much rather go through some tougher times because I know getting through that, I'll be kind of better off for it. All right. I love it. Well, Teal, thank awesome. you so much for joining us on the Far Coast podcast. We know that you're very busy with your family, but we appreciate your time. And we hope to see you at Gillette Stadium soon, back in person, having games and interviews and just being together again. So fingers crossed that soon. Yeah, thank you guys so much. And thank you for what you guys are doing with the, the Zoom uh, interviews and, and whatnot and staying busy. Uh, appreciate it. And we'll chat soon, hopefully. All right. Thanks, Teal. Stay safe, man.